There's a place you gotta see A land of discovery Mystery Island Come on! Won't you come along with me? Mystery Island Hoo-ha! Mystery Island Well, shipmate, me hates to say it, but ye just ain't no match for Captain Long John Silver. Oh, sorry. We got a little carried away with the costumes and all. Well, this is Buccaneer Bay, so I suppose an occasional pretend sword fight is all right, as long as the guests don't see it and no one gets hurt. Ouch! <laughs> sorry. It's all right. I shouldn't have been horsing around anyways. Hey, can I ask you something? Of course. Uh, I'm her assistant, so tom sometimes I just speak for her. OK. Well, this might be a dumb question, but. Nonsense. There's no such thing as a dumb question. OK. I was wondering, what exactly is a buccaneer anyway? OK, I am sorry. I take that back. That was a dumb question. <laughs> you mean to tell me that you have been working at Buccaneer Bay, all this time, and you don't know what a buccaneer is? Um, we've only been here for one day. Oh yeah, it just seems longer than it is. So, what is it, a fish? Fish? Of course not. A bird? No, it's not a bird. Then what is it? I give up. Buccaneer is just a fancy word for pirate, that's all. So that's why we're wearing pirate costumes? Yes, and because Mystery Island is chock full of pirate history. Oh! I see the connection now. Well, good. I just hope our guests are a little bit sharper. So, did you finish the list? Yes, ma'am. We did everything you asked us to. We swept the sidewalks, took out the trash, made the beds. We even watered the flowers. Good. And we even did some things you didn't ask us to do. Really? Like what? Like cleaning up the glass vase. What glass vase? The one I broke. Oh, dear. We also pulled those big weeds from the front pots. What we, Those were not weeds. Those were ornamental grasses. They sure look like weeds. Anything else? Yep. We unloaded all the dishes from the dishwasher and put all the dishes away. I guess there's no harm in that. And I saved space by stacking them all into one great big pile, and boy, was it high. <sighs> I suddenly feel a headache coming on. Well, we can't have that. You be right here. You stay right here. I'll get you a glass of water. Oh boy, just what I don't need. Were you aware of the suspicious package in your mailbox? A submarine sandwich? Not the sandwich, brother. The parcel. Sorry, detective. Thank you. We've been expecting this. Oh, you have, have you? Make note of that. A note of what? What she just said. What did she say? What did you say? When? Just now. Uh huh. So what do you want me to write down? Nothing. Nothing? Yeah, nothing. Just be ready next time I tell you to write something down. <laughs> What are you doing? Um, it's for your headache. I brought you water, but since all the glasses were broken, I brought you the hose. Hmm, new employee? Yes, they just started yesterday. Did she now? Make a note of that. Yes, detective. Did you check the references? Apparently not. Great. How about a background check? Yes, we to the background check. A thorough one. You know, you can never be too careful these days. Are you getting all this? Yes, detective. So what is your name? Um, uh, this is my sister, Dee Dee, and I'm Danielle Vale, sir. I mean, your excellency, I mean, detective, sir. Okay, Mr. Danielle, we'll see about that, won't we? But in the meantime, I need to speak with you privately, Miss Mabry, about an important matter. Miss Mabry. Oh, sorry. 
So I just received the coroner's report on Mr. Richardson. Oh, and what did it say? What did it say? Yes, the report, what did it say? Now, what kind of question is that? You, you and I both know reports do not talk. Okay, then. What did you find out? Well, I found out that there was no evidence of foul play. So Mr. Richardson died of natural causes. Well, that's good. That Mr. Richardson died of natural causes? Or that there was no foul play involved? Well, thank you for letting me know. It was my duty to let you know, and so I did my duty and let you know. Well, thank you. Just the same. Of course. Now I must leave so I can continue doing inspector business. Uh, detective? Yes. Your car is that way. I knew that. I was just seeing if you knew that. So congratulations, you have now met Detective No Clue. I'm not sure I like him very much. It's okay, he's harmless. So what did you get? A book? That's not very exciting. Says who? Don't you know reading has many benefits? Like what? Well, let's see. It improves your concentration, your memory. It makes you smarter. Just think of it as an exercise for your brain. Wow, sounds good to me. Can I go read my comic books now? Nice try. So, what's it about? It's about God and his attributes. His what? Attributes. You know, like his justice, his mercy, his love. Basically what he's like. Oh. Yeah, I read in a, a cool quote the other day that said the most important thing about you is the first thing that comes to mind when you think about God. Hmm, that's interesting. I know. I had to think about that one for a moment. But it's true. Nothing's more important than God. And my understanding of who he is really does affect how I live my life. So I thought, wow, I better get it right. You see, we often have the wrong ideas of God. We get ideas in our head, but most of them aren't necessarily true. In fact, if you do an internet search of the question, who is God, you will get over two billion answers. And most of them are wrong. Really? Then how can we be sure what God's really like? Well, that's easy, by reading God's word, the Bible. And if you haven't read it yet, you are going to find out that God is so much more than you can ever imagine. The Bible says this about God in Psalm 145, 2 verse 3. I will praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. And his greatness is unsearchable. He's wonderful. He can't even understand how much he cares about you. Ah, our guests have finally arrived. So what do we do now? Just smile and make them feel welcome. This is their first visit to Mystery Island and hopefully not their last. That sounds easy enough. How many will there be? Three. Just three? Yeah, this is a special engagement since the season hasn't officially started yet. So this will be a good week to get your feet wet. And here they are, Chris and Kelly Richardson, brothers from Ohio. Look how happy they are, and so they should they. And so they should be. They think they want a vacation. But they're about to find out that it's much more than that. Really? Like what? You'll find out soon enough. But I thought you said there would be three. I did. Mr. Henson will be arriving later. My dear guests, I am your host, Miss Mabry. Welcome to Mystery Island. There's a place you gotta see A land of discovery Mystery Island Come on! Won't you come along with me? Mystery Island, hoo ha! Mystery Island, hoo! 
Thank you for such a beautiful day. Good morning. Is your brother coming? Yes, he should be here in a moment. This is such a beautiful place, and I love the pirate theme. People do seem to enjoy it. Oh, yes, and your guys' costumes are fantastic. Well, thank you. And your necklace looks interesting. Oh, that is her O necklace. An O necklace? Yeah, I wear it to remind me how great God is. The O stands for the three big O words, omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent. Wow, those are big words. What do they mean? Well, let's take the first one, omnipotent. Omni means all, and potent means power. So when you put them together, you get all power or all powerful, which means there's nothing too hard for God. Whether it's calming a storm with just a word or healing something or making something out of nothing, God can do it, no problem. Hmm. Well, I guess that makes sense. I mean, after all, he's God, right? Exactly. The next one is omniscient, which means all-knowing. Or in other words, God knows everything. And she means everything. Everything. Which means he's never had to think about anything. He's never had to learn anything. And he's never had to plan out his course of action. He knows every hair on your head, every speck of sand that's on the earth, every star in the universe, every thought that has been thought, every word that has been spoken. There's nothing he doesn't know or nothing he doesn't understand. Jeremiah 32, 27 says, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Nothing is too hard for God. He is amazing. What? Whoa, that blows my mind. I know, mine too. And the last one is omnipresent. Which means all present? That's right. That means God is everywhere at the same time. From the bottom of the ocean to the furthest point in outer space. There's nowhere that you can go that God isn't already there, which means you can't hide from him. But it also means that you're never truly alone. Wow, I like that. It's cool to think about. Yeah, so you see, just knowing that God is with us, that he knows everything about me, that he can do anything is very comforting. Hmm. You wouldn't happen to have any O necklaces in your gift shop, would you? No, sorry, but here, you can have mine. No, I couldn't take yours. No, really, I can make another one. Here. Okay, it's very kind of you. Thank you. It's okay, little buddy. Don't need, you don't need to be scared. We're almost home. Excuse me. Danielle, what are you doing? It's 10 o'clock. You should be working by now. Sorry, I lost track of time and I was taking a walk on the beach, but then I found this cute little buddy. Oh no. What's wrong? He's gone. Don't do that again, I thought I'd lost you. Oh, sorry. And I suppose you want to keep him? May I, please? Just don't ever let me see him. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. Now get to work. Sorry I'm late, I overslept. Oh no, that's not a problem. I trust the accommodations were satisfactory? Oh yes, everything's wonderful. Good, so you're probably wondering why you're here. Oh, uh, well, we won a vacation, right? Not exactly. N not exactly? You know, it might be better if you sit down. Uh-oh, you're making me nervous. Don't worry, there's nothing to be nervous about. Oh, fresh squeezed lemonade? <laughs> yeah, right, this is just the cheap stuff from the can. Mostly sugar. Okay, thank you, Danielle and Dee Dee. Now, how about some ice for their uh, lemonade? Okay. Delightful girls, they just started this week. Don't worry, everything's fine. So, where were we? I think you're gonna tell us why we were here. Oh, yeah. Well, first off, you didn't win this vacation. I knew it. it was too good to be true. No, you don't understand. You didn't win it because it was a gift. What? What? From whom? Who'd want to give us a vacation? <laughs> She's probably going to say some rich uncle we've never heard of died and left us his inheritance. Yeah, wouldn't that be nice? 
actually, that's exactly what happened. <laughs> You're joking, right? No, she isn't joking. What? This is Mr. Tobias Henson, an attorney from Finley and Associates. He arrived just after you did. Um, Dee Dee, why aren't you using ice tongs? I couldn't find them, but don't worry, my hands are clean. Oh, I'm sorry, excuse me. I suddenly have some employee training Did I, I do have something to do. wrong? What's wrong? Anyway, I represent, I represent your uncle's estate. But that's impossible. We've never had an uncle. Yeah, there must be some mistake. Well, I can assure you there's no mistake. Your father had a brother. His name was Joe Richardson. It says so right here. This is crazy. Well, it may be crazy, but also true. Then why haven't we ever heard of him before? I don't know. So, what do you know about him? I do know he's a treasure hunter. A treasure hunter? You mean like Indiana Jones? Yup. Your uncle was the best, fearless, rugged, never give up. Why he even wrestled a lion for a clue he needed. Wow. Sounds like he knew him. Uh, I, I just read stories about him. So, why did he come to Mystery Island? Because Mystery Island has a lot of pirate history, which means treasure. In fact, there's an old legend that says the largest pirate treasure is on this, is on this uh, island buried somewhere. Really? That's so cool. Yep, the ultimate treasure, the one of all treasures dreams of finding. The one even Blackbeard himself tried searching for Captain Scurvy Legs Gold, but couldn't. Captain Scurvy Legs Gold? Sounds like something right out of an adventure book. And your uncle wanted to find it if it was the last thing he did. So, did he? He found something. Have you discussed the inheritance yet? I was just getting to that. Wow, an inheritance. Don't you love the sound of that? Yeah, and I can't believe it's happening to us. So when it comes to an inheritance, the will usually states to be given on how it's supposed to be given, and your uncle will is no except. Except? Except what? Except that there is a twist. Your uncle, being a treasure hunter, wanted to, the inheritance to include a treasure hunt. You're joking. No, he's quite serious. That's okay. It sounds fun to me. So here's how it works. There are three legs to the hunt. At the beginning of each leg, you receive a treasure map with directions and clues to find the buried artifact. Once you find the artifact and bring it back here, you'll be given a map for the next leg. Makes sense. And what happens if we don't find the artifact? You don't get the inheritance. Oh? Well, then I guess we just have to find it. So are you ready to get started? Absolutely. Let's get the show on the road. Okay, so we've got briefcase number one right here. So I will input my combination. Then Mr. Henson will input his. And inside should be the first treasure map. Cool. Him. Yeah. So, are you ready to get started? Yeah. Um, there is one stipulation. And what's that? We're not permitted to help you. Oh, great. So, you mean we're on our own? I'm afraid so. Thanks, Uncle Joe, for making it easy. That's okay. We can do this. I know we can. As long as I figure out how to read the map. You're not giving me much confidence. Oh, well. We'll figure it out as we go. Come on. Hey, wait for me.
There's a place you gotta see, a land of discovery, mystery island. Come on! Won't you come along with me? Mystery island, hoo ha! Mystery island, hoo. Hey, it's me. No, the coast is clear. No one's around. Yep, so easy. They fell for the hook, line, and sinker. Yeah, you know, I kind of like this dressing up business, carrying a briefcase, feeling important. Makes you feel like I should have been a real lawyer. Wait, someone's coming. Oh, uh, Mom, I don't know about Christmas. You know how much I hate to travel during the holidays. And I have a big case I'll be working on, you know, big important stuff. What What do you want? <laughs> That's what she's supposed to ask you. What? So would you like anything? We have cold drinks, we have ice cream, we have giant pretzels. Uh, no thanks. Really? Are you sure? Because I, I'd really like to serve you. That's a nice kid, but n no. Why are you still standing here? Because Miss Mabry says we need to get our feet wet. Hmm? We need to get our feet wet. You see, we've never done this job before. In fact, we've never done any job before. So we have to get some experience, especially this week, because there's only three guests. Okay, okay, the fine. Just give me a uh, water with a lemon. Oh, really? Oh, okay. So that's one water with what again? A lemon, right? A um, lemon, yes. Oh, no, my pencil broke. Now what am I supposed to do? Maybe memorize the order. I mean, I guess that could work. Um, so you wanted a water with what again? A water with lemon. Right, one water with lemon coming right up. <laughs> Sorry, it was some kids trying to be waiters. Anyway, they're on the trail now, so I should have something valuable in my hot little hands very soon. Yeah, don't worry, I'm a, one way or another, I'm gonna get that treasure. Sir? Mr. Henson? Where did he go? I don't know. It, it sure isn't easy being a waiter, is it? Ice water with lemon. Hmm, not bad. Could use a little sugar, but it tastes pretty good. Ahem. This is Mabry. I believe you have work to do, young ladies. But, but I was working. We were trying to serve Mr. Henson. We even took his order, but then he just disappeared. Mayor, what's wrong? Your tag is sticking up. Oh, is that all? I thought I was in trouble. What's that on your elbow? What do you mean? <gasps> oh, I'm so sorry. Let's go get you cleaned up. I didn't mean it. I, I really didn't. Way to go, Danielle. So you think you can drive better than I is what you were saying? Yes, detective. And that is where you're wrong because I am a trained officer of the law. And besides, what's one little wreck got to do with anything when we're doing important work? Oh, Danielle, I could fire for myself if I wanted to. Oh, hello, Detective No Clue. Hello. Um, you have been saying it wrong? No Clue? Oh, I'm sorry. So it's No Clue? That is it. So why are you at Buccaneer Bay for right now? For official police business, Stanley? All right. The Mystery Island Police Department, in an effort to improve its services, is conducting a survey to see how its citizens feel about the effectiveness of the department. Therefore, your participation is very much appreciated. Okay, so who came up with the questions? I did. That's what I thought. So, you want me to answer these? Yes, please. So, the first question is, true or false, on a scale of one to 10, how effective is the Mystery Island Police Department? And you want me to answer true or false? That's correct. 
Okay, then I guess I'll just go with false on that one. Is that your final answer? Sure, why not? Okay, then. Next question. Yes or no, when you have a problem, would you rather call the Mr. Island Police Department? Or? Or what? It, it exactly, isn't the question missing something? I don't believe so. Okay, then I guess I'll just go with no. Okay, next question. Ooh. Stanley, I'm getting a phone call. Nahu? Yes? Yes? I see. We'll be right there. So he's up to his old tricks. What is it? There has been a robbery at the Pirate Museum. Captain Hook's hook is missing. Oh, no. Oh, no is right. It is no doubt the work of Mr. Gino Patel, international antiques thief, or otherwise known as the snake. How do you know who it is? It is my business to know. But don't worry, we will find him and bring him to justice. Rest assured of that. Now, we cannot complete this survey now. Let us go, Stanley. Detective. Ha! I was just tricking you. Right. Well, why were the police here? Oh, they were just conducting a silly survey, that's all. But then they had to rush off because the pirate museum was just robbed. Really? That's terrible. Did they catch the thief? I don't think so. Well, hopefully they do soon. Well, I think there's a small chance of that as long as Detective No Clue is involved. Um, yeah, I just hate the fact that there's a criminal element on this island. So, oh, look, the Richardsons are back. So, how did it go? Well, we, we got lost a couple of times and almost gave up. Then we got in a real groove and started hitting all the checkpoints. It was hard, though. And, and hot. So you found the artifact? Sure did. Would you like to see it? Would I? I mean, sh sure I would. It's certainly not Captain Scurvyleg's gold, but at least we're one step closer to the treasure, right? Mm, wow. No, it's got to be worth something, don't you think? Well, we have a fact sheet that your uncle gave us. So it says that it's over 1,000 years old and belonged to King Musulamu of Nerun. It's Masulamu. Oh, you've heard of him? No, I, I might have. Wow, I'm impressed. So what else does it say about King Mu? Let's see. He became king when he was 12 years old. And he was a good king at first, but then his kingdom grew. He became powerful. Then he changed and became ruthless, terrible, and cruel. Wow, that's sad. So he began well, but didn't end well, like so many others. Yeah. You know, there's only one king that will never change, and that's God himself. He's the king of the universe. But if that's true, if God is the king of the universe, then why does he allow evil kings like King Mu? Because of sin, that's why. You see, in the beginning, when God created the world, he had to set some rules. But Adam and Eve, our first humans, disobeyed God, and that resulted on a curse on everything. So that's why bad things happen? Because of a curse? Yeah, that's right. Because we call in the great controversy between God and Satan. You see, we know that God wins in the end, but the world will prove to us why choosing God is the right choice. But still, why did God allow things to work out that way? Couldn't have you just, you know, done things differently? No, because God doesn't make a mistake. This isn't a plan B. See, God is holy, which means his ways are infinitely higher than ours. Isaiah 6.3 says, The angels in heaven cried to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is filled with his glory. So we have to trust him. The problem is, our thoughts on God are way too small. And he is so much bigger and better than we could ever imagine. So how about I hold on to the crown while you uh, start the next leg? Start the next leg? Can't be serious. Can't we wait until morning? Yeah, we're pretty tuckered out. Yeah, you guys enjoy the evening. You've earned it. All right, let's meet. 
first thing at seven o'clock. Can we make it eight? There's a place you gotta see A land of discovery Mystery Island Come on! Won't you come along with me? Mystery Island, hoo-ha! Mystery Island, hoo Okay, don't forget to sweep the sidewalk. Oh, and check the light fixtures. I think there were a couple out in the east wing. Oh, and the flower pots need to be watered a bit, too. Oh, dirty dishes. How lovely. Well, what's got you in? Shh. What's gotten you in such a tizzy? Just making sure he's not around. Who's not? Shh. Who's not around? Mr. Henson. Mr. Henson isn't. Shh. Mr. Henson is not here. So please stop. Shh us. Sorry. Now, why on earth are you so bothered about Mr. Henson? Because we don't think Mr. Henson is who he says he is. What are you talking about? He didn't know the word notwithstanding. So? Our father's a lawyer, and he said if there's any one word that all lawyers use, it's the word notwithstanding. So we don't think he's really a lawyer after all. He's just pretending to be one. Well... That is ridiculous. So I have a suggestion. How about you guys stop worrying about Mr. Henson and start cleaning? I still think Mr. Henson's a fake. And the next time I see him, I'm going to serve him like one. But I don't understand. How are you going to catch him if you don't know what he looks like? My trained instincts will tell me, as always, perhaps someday you will understand. Hmm. So everyone's hiding. Well, we have ways of dealing with that. I'll search over here, you search over there. Oh, detective. We are looking for Mr. Gino Patel, international antiques thief or otherwise known as the snake? Oh yes, the fire mm, re museum robbery. And how did you know that? You told us about it yesterday, remember? Oh, of course I remember. I was just testing you. Mm -hmm. So why are you at Buccan Buccaneer Bay? You don't think he's here, do you? Maybe he is, maybe he isn't. And that is why I will not leave until, I, until no stone has been unturned. So I will need to see a guest list? Oh, of course, we'll go get that. Now, the interrogation begins. Watch closely and you might learn something. Yes, detective. The briefcase, please. Detective. What is it? Someone's coming. Oh, our first victims, I mean suspects. Really think we're getting, getting the hang of this, don't you? Yeah, maybe we could become professional treasure hunters. Like Uncle Joe? Ahem! Sorry, we didn't see you standing there. Yes, I know that. I am Detective Nokloof of the Mystery, yeah, the Mystery Island Police Department, and I need to ask you a few questions. Really? Yes. Did we do something wrong? We shall see. Please take a seat. What's that? A, de a lie detector that detects lies. Kelly, I don't like this. 
Oh, it's okay. We don't have anything to hide. So here's how it works. If you tell me the truth, this machine right here will not make a noise. But if you tell me something that is not true, you will hear a ringing sound. Allow me to demonstrate. I am Detective No Clue. You see, there is no ringing sound. But when I say something like two plus two equals seven, you see? Wow, that's impressive. I bet you caught some real big time criminals with that one, huh? Oh, we sure have. <laughs> but let's move along. So who would like to go first? I guess I will. Are you sure about that? Yeah, I just want to get it done and over with. Then let us begin. What is your name? Chris Richardson. Okay, Miss Richardson. Thank you. Have you... Oh, write that down. Oh, yes, did I... Have you been to the Pirate Museum? No, I didn't even know that there was a Pirate Museum. Have you been to Captain Hook's... We'll see about that, actually. Write that down. Have you been to Captain Hook's department in the Pirate Museum? No, like I said, I didn't even know that there was a pirate museum. Okay. So my trained instincts are telling me that you have not been to the pirate museum. Is that a correct? Yes, that's correct. Now we're getting somewhere. Mr. Stanley, can you take the call? I am busy. Yes, detective. Hello, this is Stanley. Oh, hello, commissioner. No, he can't come to the phone right now. He's busy with an interrogation. Okay, I'll ask him. Detective? Yes? The commissioner says his birthday cake is missing. Have you seen it? Well, I may have seen someone take it. Okay, I ate it. You ate it? The yes, whole thing? The whole thing. But it was because I thought it was poison. Okay, we will conclude this interrogation. Thank you for your time. Let us go, Stanley. Well, that was interesting. Did the detective leave? Yeah, you just missed him. Oh, well, that's okay. So, did you finish the second leg? We did. And how did it go? Better. I think we're starting to get the hang of it. Good. Did you find the artifact? I've got it right here. Wait, should you call Mr. Henson first? No, I don't think that'll be necessary. We can fill him in later, though. Whoa, look at that. A stone in the shape of a heart? Let's see if the fact sheet says anything. Okay, so it says that the heart was crafted in 1437 by the Renaissance sculptor Rudius. Wow, that makes it certainly valuable. Yeah, but anyway, it was sculpted to go accordingly to the loving heart of King Destrian of Faramar. His generosity and acts of kindness were legendary, especially to the widows and orphans of his kingdom. Wow, I'd love to hear more about him. I know, I would too. But you know who it reminds me of? Who? God, I mean, as much as this king loved his people, no one will ever love his people more than God. Not even close. Really? How so? Well, the Bible tells us that God is perfectly holy and just, and that he created us to live in harmony with him. But like I said yesterday, our first parents, Adam and Eve, rebelled, and as a result, and sin was unleashed into the world. Is that the curse you were talking about? Yeah, very good. See, I was listening. Good, because what we're about to tell you today is really important. You see, as descendants of Adam and Eve, we've all participated in sin. And so every one of us is guilty and rightly deserves God's punishment. But if I'm a good person, I'll still go to heaven, right? It's not quite as simple as that. You see, the Bible says that no one is good, not even one. And that's because God's standards of goodness is different than ours. So what do we do? Well, there's nothing we can do, but the penalty for sin has already been paid by God. And thankfully, he did. How? Well, he sent his son, Jesus Christ. He came to earth over 2,000 years ago. He lived a perfect life, and he died a death to, to pay for our sins. 
Then he rose on the third day to prove that the penalty had been satisfied. So, in other words, God paid it for us. That's how much he loves us. Romans 5, 8 says, But God demonstrates his own love towards us that we are still sinners, but Christ died for us. Wow, I've never heard it explained like that before. Yeah, it's called the gospel, but it does require a response. We have to turn away from our sins that Jesus did for us. Then God will forgive us and adopt us into his family. Well, you've certainly given us a lot to think about. Yeah, that's for sure. <sighs> Sorry for interrupting, but I need to talk to you right now. Excuse me. What's wrong? I found something. What do you mean you found something? Come on, I gotta show you. There's a place you gotta see A land of discovery Mystery Island Come on! Won't you come along with me? Mystery Island, hoo ha! Mystery Island, hoo! Okay, so Mr. Henson is headed this way and I am going to alert Detective No Clue and you just need to keep him occupied. Any questions? Nope, I've got it all under control. Okay, and whatever you do, do not let him out of your sight. Don't worry, I'll stick to him like glue. Sorry, I'm gonna miss it. This is gonna be fun. Hey, it's me. They're doing the final leg right now. So Petey's around the corner. I know I got the hook, crown, and heart. And pretty soon, Captain Scurvy Legs go. Not bad for a couple of days of work, huh? Yeah, I know he's after me, but come on, it's no clue. I got nothing to fear. So any news on your end? Hey, kid, can you do that somewhere else? Hey! Did you say something? Turn it off. Oh, sorry. I'm doing a phone call. Do you mind? Mind? Of course I don't mind. Talk as long as you like. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey. There, that's better. I hope Danielle didn't disturb your phone call. Yeah, well, it's done now, so it doesn't matter. Okay, would you like something? Chips, cheese, nachos? Uh, nachos? Sure, whatever. Okay, nachos it is. Beautiful day, isn't it? Hey, kid, watch what you're doing. Oh, sorry. I just looked away for a second and look what the mess I've made. Yeah, it's fine, it's just water. Still want your nachos? Sure, I guess. Ah. What's wrong? There's a lizard in the nachos. Oh, that's where he went. Come here, little buddy. Okay, that's it. I'm done here. No, you're not. What do you mean? Look behind you. Mr. Gino Patel, international antique thief, or otherwise known as the snake, you are under arrest for stealing Captain Hook's hook from the Pirate Museum. What do you mean? My name is Tobias Hansen. Oh, really? Then explain this book, How to Impersonate a Lawyer in 10 Easy Steps. Danielle found it in your briefcase yesterday. Come on, you might as well confess. You're not a lawyer. Now we can do this the easy way or the hard way. 
Oh, my back. <laughs> After him, Stanley. Yes, Like they say, crime doesn't pay. Oh, be quiet. Good work, Stanley. Let us go. Detective. Ha! I know, I was just teasing you again. Uh, that was a, a good one. <laughs> that was Good work, it couldn't have gone any better. What's going on? And why is Mr. Henson in handcuffs? Because Mr. Henson wasn't really Mr. Henson. What? His real name is Gino Patel, an international antiques thief. Really? That's crazy. Um, so he was the bad guy? Yes, and it wasn't and if it weren't for detectives Danielle and Dee Dee here, they would have never caught him. Wow. Way to go, Danielle and Dee Dee. Thanks. Yeah, good job. Thanks. Hey, why don't you two take the rest of the day off? You've definitely earned it. Really? Yeah. Wow. Miss Mabry, you're the best. You guys go have some fun. I just can't believe that about Mr. Henson. I know. I was shocked too when I found out. But anyway, you finished the last slide? Yes, we did. And here's what we found. Sorry about the briefcase. It's a mini treasure chest. Cool, huh? But we couldn't open it. That's because I have the key. Here you go. I wonder what's inside. Maybe it's directions to Captain Scurvy Legs Gold. Oh, it's a diamond and a large one at that. Wonder whose it was. Maybe Cleopatra's. Or the Queen of Sheba. I thought what does the fact sheet say? We don't have a fact sheet this time, but we do have something much better. It's a video from your uncle. What? Hello, Chris, Kelly. Believe it or not, I'm your Uncle Joe. And if you're watching this, I guess that means I'm gone, which is a really strange thought. But anyway, I'm just sorry. Really sorry that we never met. And it's my fault entirely. You see, I left home when I was 16, before your dad was born, and never came back. Something that I deeply regret. But I wasn't just running away, I was pursuing a dream, a passion that I had. I wanted to see the world and hunt for buried treasure. So that's what I did. From the top of the world to the bottom of the ocean and everywhere in between, searching countless ruins, caves, and shipwrecks, looking for long lost treasures and artifacts. Then I heard about Captain Scurvylegs Gold, the treasure of all treasures, and knew right away I had to find it. So I packed my things and moved to Mystery Island. Then I searched and searched and searched. For years I searched, but found nothing. Until one day, when I was at my wit's end, I stumbled upon an old stone church tucked away at the north end of the island. Now I've never been a churchgoer, but that day for some reason I had to check it out. Inside was an old man on his knees praying. When he saw me, he asked if he could help. Well, I must have looked desperate. So I told him about Captain Scurvy Legs and my lifelong quest for treasure. He listened patiently and then asked if I'd like to hear about the treasure he'd found. A treasure that was far, far greater than the one I was searching for. And of course I was interested. Then he told me about the one true God, the creator, the king of the universe, a God of righteousness, 
holiness, and justice, but also a God of mercy, goodness, love, and forgiveness. A God who knows everything, sees everything, and can do miracles. A God with no beginning and no end. A God who never changes and whose ways are higher than ours. And sadly, a God I didn't know. But then he explained to me how I could know God by turning from my sins and trusting in what Jesus did for me on the cross. So, I became a child of God that day and my life changed. Suddenly I had an intense desire to share the new treasure with my friends and neighbors. I also began working on a plan to reunite with the family. But that was derailed by a bad health report, which is why you're here right now. I have many regrets, many things I'd do differently, but I can't change the past. All I can do is finish well. And so I want to give you something. Sure, I've got some valuable artifacts, three of which you already have, but that's not where the true riches are. Not by a long shot. No, the real treasure is in a relationship with the one true God. And that's what I really want you to have. The Bible says in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Now what could possibly be more valuable than that? So if you're interested, and I hope you are, I've asked Miss Mabry to explain God's plan of salvation more adequately. She can also answer any questions you might have. So with that, I'll say goodbye. I hope to see you on the other side. Goodbye, Chris. Goodbye, Kelly. Wow, that makes me sad. I know. He was a sweet man. He used to stop by the side of the island. He really liked it over here. So, any thoughts about what he said? Yeah, it's a bummer he didn't find Captain Scurvyleg's gold. <clears throat> I think she meant the part about God. I know, I'm just disappointed, that's all. But Uncle Joe wasn't disappointed, was he? No, even though he had spent nearly 20 years looking for it, he knew that he had found something so, so much better. A relationship with God. That's right, and you can too if you'll trust him. Yeah, and who could be more trustworthy than a God who is perfectly holy and just? This is my favorite Bible verse, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understandings, but acknowledge him and he shall guide your paths. Trust God? Hmm? So I should just trust him to help me figure out life? She's right, Kelly. Yeah, I know. We need one, what Uncle Joe had. Really? Then let me grab my Bible because we have so much to talk about. There's a place you gotta see A land of discovery Mystery Island Come on! Won't you come along with me? Mystery Island, hoo-ha! Mystery Island, hoo Thank you, drama team. That was amazing. Maybe we should have them come back out on the stage and give them one last clap. <laughs> drama team. Thank you so much for helping us find the one true God this week. And I just really want to thank personally um, a lot of people this week for all the hard work. Barb and Janelle and the drama team, Gwen and Pastor Logan. Um, the list goes on and on. Lorena, um, we couldn't do this week without all of you guys. And the kids had fun. We had 35 almost every night. So, yeah. praise God. And speaking of people to thank, we really, really owe a lot of gratitude to Tana, Lene, and Brooke. Brooke is not here. Lene, are you somewhere here? Lene, come on up. We've got some flowers. She was here. Down. Oh, downstairs, maybe. Anyway, we have flowers. <laughs> thank you. 
<laughs> but we have flowers for all of them. Thank you so very, very much. So before we um, totally tie this program up with a bow, um, we will be doing, oh, I need to make one announcement. Thank you to the church family. The kids raised, with your help, $1,067. Yep. So praise God, Adra will be delighted to receive that uh, donation from that collective group. Um, we will have a benediction, and then you are more than welcome to stay seated for a few minutes while we watch a short slideshow. But if you need to leave, we understand. However, I think this is a first a VBS program done before 1230. <laughs> Tana's going to do the benediction for us and then stay for the slideshow if you choose. All right, let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this special Sabbath, and we thank you for BBS this last week and for blessing each night and bringing the kids. I pray that you'll continue to bless this church and everyone here, and um, may we keep our eyes on you. We love you in your name. Amen. <laughs>